please explain, like, how does the uh, true age test work, like the basic one? I know there are 12 reports now. What does it measure? And then, you know, like what insights, action items are we going to get out of that once the results come back in? Yeah, definitely. And, and I think that in order to understand how to use those results, it might help be helpful to go into sort of how this test was created, at least originally. Um, because at first, it wasn't necessarily developed as a, a health marker. It was used almost as, a, I would say, a novelty trick, uh, where they sort of created this clock to predict someone's chronological age. And they were using this originally at things like, uh, you know, crime scenes to see how old someone was if they left their DNA at a crime scene uh, for forensic analysis. And they were also using it in, in for Syrian refugees, where, uh, for instance, those people who were coming to asylum in these European countries, if they were minors, they would be let into the country. But if they were adults, they probably wouldn't. And so what they were sort of looking at is, you know, are these people adults or minors and, and making sure that they weren't lying about their age. And so it was used in these, these ways initially um, after it sort of was created in 2013. But very soon they started to realize a pattern, which is that those people who were older than their chronological age with this testing were at significantly more increased risk for these outcomes. And those people who were younger than their chronological age uh, were were uh, Im at improved outcomes. And one of my favorite statistics is that if everyone in the world were to be seven years younger, we'd be able to cut disease in half immediately. You'd have a 50% reduction in morbidity and mortality. And so this can make a major, major impact. And so that's when they started to realize that this measurement of the biological aging process is absolutely fundamental to everything uh, that relates to our health. And so with this testing, that's essentially what we're looking at. We're looking at how old is your body and are you accelerated or are you a decelerated aging? Um, and then once we get that baseline, now we have an objective way to measure if we can reverse or slow that process. Um, and so what we try and do is to find out what interventions are the best, um, both in the population, but also in the individual. Um, to see, you know, what things we might recommend. And, and there are a lot of things we've learned from this process. Um, a lot of things we know epidemiologically um, are things that we probably already know, right? Um, optimizing sleep, right? Uh, you know, having uh, a nutritious diet. Some of those really, you know, uh, I would say uh, no-brainer type things. Um, but this is a way to see how well you're doing on a personal basis even. Are you really accomplishing all those things like you should? Um, and, and sort of what is your risk from, from, you know, the biggest risk factor of all of these things? And so that's fundamentally what we're looking at It is. Uh, what is your aging process and then finding the ways that really work for you to reverse that aging process. Right. By the way, I, I believe that I'm aging at 0.89 of a year, which is not uh, terrible. I mean, it's better than one, but what's the record? Do you have a record or what's, what, what am I shooting for? Yeah, so so we do have a record, and it's it's right around 0. 0.6 biological years per year. Um, that is uh, essentially the, the the upper threshold, and uh, and that score is great. But really, what you want to do, um, I should mention, is to is to have that as low as possible. And um, you know, the lower that you get that, the the better. So those people who are actually fast agers um, have you know significantly worse outcomes. On average, they can be up to 65 percent more likely to die than those individuals who are at normal or slow aging. Um, and so, so this can make a, a huge impact. And as I mentioned, it's correlated to even, you know, how many wrinkles you have. It's correlated to your IQ. It's correlated um, to all of these metrics of quality of life. And so you, that, that is our favorite of all of the metrics, that instantaneous marker, because it tells you at this exact moment are the things that you're doing in your life good, uh, you know, to protect you from, from these things in the long term. Um, and so uh, for that point at nine is actually not a bad score. As we get older, it's harder to keep that below one. But even if we're slightly above one, so that means we're aging at, you know, maybe a 1.01 .01 biological years per year. So for every year, chronologically, you're aging 1.01 .01 biologically. You actually increase your risk of death over the next seven years by 56 percent. And you'd increase your risk of a chronic disease diagnosis by 54 percent. And so keeping that below one is is definitively the goal there. Um, but uh, the lower that we can get it, the better, because we'll just have even better outcomes. Yeah, my goal is to get to point six because then if I had another 30 years to live, I would now extend it to another 50, basically. It, well, yes, I mean, definitely. The, you know, uh, we looked at a 15-year follow-up cohort, and the people who were slow agers um, were, and, and point six is definitively slow aging no matter how old you are. Um, if, uh, if those people who were in that cohort were on average, uh, you know, were over 15 years, had maybe had a, a 9 to 10% death rate, whereas those people who were fast agers had over 60% death rate. Um, and, and so, again, you know, you, if you want to reduce that risk, the best thing you can do is to fix the fundamental process and the biggest risk factor, which is the aging process. Perfect. Listen, thanks for joining us and we'll catch you on another one.